Hi guys, this is Harris Sultan, and as I told you in my last video, that Islamist propagandists are running for the hills. They are scared, they're shaking in their boots, because it appears we can't afford to be overly excited, but it appears that the UK government is finally waking up to the reality of this rising Islamism in Britain. In the wake of these pro-Hamas demonstrations, it appears that the UK government wants to do something about it. The Islamists can do their propaganda against LGBTQ, against apostates, against even the natives. But one thing they can't mess around with is the Jews. Therefore, it seems like there might be some political will and motivation behind curbing this threat. Because the Israelis and the powerful Jewish community might now be pushing our Western politicians to do something about it. And this is the reason why Hizbut Tahrir finally got proscribed and people who show support for Hamas could be prosecuted. And this is the reason why all these Islamist propagandists are running away. And they're not even trying to defend their stance. As Roshan M. Saleh of Five Pillars, sorry, Five Pillars, said, How can we talk freely about these issues when the threat of prosecution is hanging over our heads? And that's the reason why they're not going on Piers Morgan's show to explain their side of the story. Because they know that if they say something, they will be prosecuted. In other words, the noose around their necks is tightening. And as Ali Dawa said that when people like us who apostatize from Islam, when we will be executed by Muslim governments, people like Ali Dawa would be watching. Would be watching. And he's proud of that. And we're proud of that. And we're proud of that. And we're proud of that. Yeah? Capital punish will be applied in an Islamic state. Yeah? Whether his wet dream is going to come true or not, that's a different thing. But at least we are now watching as the noose around their necks gets tightened. These guys are so stupid that they have been saying so many terrible things so openly in plain sight. And because our governments didn't do anything, they became more and more brazen and they kept pushing the boundary. But since now things are changing, they're running scared. So I found another video where this silly dilly dude called Dili Hussein is casually talking about how to bring about Sharia in non-Sharia compliant countries. So we're going to talk about that. But before we go further, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to support me in making content like this, then you can become my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan. Or you can simply buy me a coffee. Links below on your screen. So let's get to our today's juicy video. So have a look at this video by Silly Dilly Dude Dilly Hussein. Look how casually he's talking and discussing various methods at their disposal to bring Sharia in non-Sharia countries. Have a look. So this video has already got 131,000 views and look what he's saying. How can we, yeah, re-establish the Khilafah again? So re-establish the Caliphate. In the Caliphate, you have Sharia law. That is the biggest prerequisite of creating a caliphate. This is exactly what ISIS wanted to do. This is exactly what Baghdadi wanted to do. And hence the name ISIS, Islamic State, which was a caliphate and he declared himself a caliph. So look what a silly dude has to say. So there are three methods. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Our brothers from Hizb tahrir Ooh, our brothers from Hizb tahrir Ooh, our terrorist brothers. Mm, okay. Who believe... Uh, you do some grassroots dawah, you awaken the community, you awaken the ummah, but really you seek power from a select group of elite who will give you nusra, and then you do maybe something like, but not restricted to a military coup, take over, done. So basically he's saying that let's just do dawah, let's try to brainwash people, and then powerful people, the elite of these countries, brainwash them with Islamic ideology, brainwash them with Islamic caliphate ideas, and then done then they will do the rest. So that's step number one. Okay, that's what his brothers in his Tahrir believe. So not a military coup, but people who can bring about a military coup, we need to change their minds. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Then you have our brothers who, I don't like this term, they are what you would call from the jihadi spectrum. Well, he doesn't like the term. Okay, but these jihadis. So the first ones are Islamists who believe in changing the system by brainwashing, i.e. dawah, and then 
there are people who want to do it militarily, the jihadis. He doesn't like the label for some reason, but that's exactly what it is. They say that, no, we cannot seek Nusra because they are Taghut and the army are Taghut. We have to take it by force. Yep. We have to es establish Islam by force. Yep. Then there are those who, even though this movement has developed through the time, they say, well, hold on here. We need to deal with the means that we have, with the mechanisms that we have. Because of sensitivity, let us not mention certain no, groups. Of course. Ooh, let's not mention certain groups because we might rat them out accidentally and the British government might proscribe them. Clever. Okay. Okay. So we will do that. One. And we will seek Nusra from... Nusra means support. Maybe the... the Ahl Hali wal Akto, maybe the military elite. The military or... elite. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. one example. Yeah. That's one example, the military elite of a country, like the military elite of Pakistan or Egypt or whatever, all of those countries, maybe Britain, but he didn't say that specifically. Who are uh, working with the system and also you have put your people in the military. Oh, like put your people in these powerful organizations where they can act as your agents, as your spies. So casually insulted. Look at this, they're openly, dis <laughs> openly discussing it. You know why that's happened? Because we've allowed them to do that. Or you give dawah to the people already in the military. Yeah, and then, okay. When Either install your own people in the military or give dawah or brainwash the people in the military. When they become, those people, when they become, uh, when they accept your dawah yeah. and, and, and they become part of you, have to work within the system. To overthrow the system. To overthrow the system. To change the system. To change the system. Oh, wow. So I posted this video, as you can see, 131,000 views. And a lot of people saw that. And for the first time, Silly Dilly Dude actually responded to me. And this is not the first time when I've actually gone after him, when I have exposed him. But this time he responded. So let's see what he said. I am speaking very specifically about the Muslim majority world, not the UK or the West. Nice try, Murtad. Ooh. So first of all, you have never responded to me. Why? Why did you feel the need to respond to me this time? You know why? Because I obviously tagged counterterrorism, and he knows. He's probably already on the watch list. But this time they're scared. They can feel the noose tightening around their necks. They can see that they're coming for them. So he goes, no, 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 no. I am only talking about the Muslim majority countries, not the West or the UK. Well, first of all, I know these guys are very deceptive. We can't really take them on face value, but as a rule of thumb, this is what we have to do. So I can ignore the fact that maybe he wasn't talking about the UK or any Western country. Let's just go by his own word that he's actually speaking about the Muslim majority countries. Hang on a second. Under international law, that is also a crime. You can't overthrow internationally recognized governments. A lot of these countries are actually democracies, like, for example, Egypt, Iraq, or Pakistan. He's obviously not talking about Afghanistan because he's a mouthpiece of the Taliban. So how come Britain is actually harboring terrorists like this guy who is planning to overthrow internationally recognized legitimate governments like for example my birth country pakistan mm, that's a crime and thirdly another crucial point dili hussein as quran chapter 4 verse 135 says that you must stand firm in the way of allah for allah for justice you must stand firm would you still stand firm and admit that Hizbut Tahrir, which is now a proscribed organization in the UK, which you are a citizen of, even though you're not loyal to it, are you still going to profess your brotherhood with Hizbut Tahrir? Ooh. So I replied to his tweet and I tagged counterterrorism again. So the question is... Is the British government really serious about curbing this menace of rising Islamists who want to overthrow legitimate governments in foreign countries? This is a violation of international law. You cannot do that. So silly dilly dude. We'll be watching. We're going to be watching. I think your time's up. I think you're going to get a knock on your door very soon. You're already on the watch list. I, I'm pretty sure Mohammed Hijab is already on the watch list. I'm pretty sure Daniel Hakikachu is already on the watch list. I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, actually not Ali Dawa. He's just too stupid. Forget about him. So, silly dilly dude, his boyfriend, Roshan M. Saleh, 
who said that we, oh, we're scared. We might get prosecuted if we speak our minds. Time's up, boys. Or at least it seems that way. It could only be electioneering because this is an election year in Britain. So the conservative government of Rishi Sunak, even though it seems like he wants to take action against these Islamists, but we have to wait and see. So I hope you like today's video. Like, share and subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to support me, then you can be my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan or you can simply buy me a coffee. Until next time, ta-da. If you'd like to support my work, you can become my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Harus Sultan or you can simply buy me a coffee.